Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby, and welcome to my strange little YouTube channel. Now today's video, we are doing another triple V. If you don't know what that is, it is another vintage and vanished video. And if you're new to my channel, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I have a series on my channel where I cover vintage cases of people who have mysteriously vanished. Now today's video is about a case that, when I looked it up, it was basically given the name one of the most important cases you've probably never heard of. And I definitely gotta agree with that. It was a very important case back in the day, it was very talked about, and it actually resulted in a change of policies in California. So it was a pretty big deal. So with that being said, let's just get into the video. Robin Ann Graham was born on June 22nd, which is weirdly my birthday, 1952 to parents Marvin and Beverly Graham. She grew up on Lemoyne Street in the Silver Lake Los Feliz area of Los Angeles, California. She graduated from John Marshall High School in June of 1970 and went on to attend Pierce College in Woodland Hills and worked part-time at Pier 1 Imports in Hollywood. The date is Saturday, November 14th, 1970, and she went to work that day and then right after work, her friends picked her up from Pier 1 Imports and they went out for a few hours and then when they were deciding to drop her off, they dropped her off back at Pier 1 Imports to get her car and this was in the early hours of November 15th, 1970 and at the time, she was driving her boyfriend's car. She left the parking lot and her car was extremely low on gas so not much longer after starting it, it stalls out on the shoulder of the southbound Hollywood Freeway near the Santa Monica off-ramp. So at this point, it's late, it's almost 2 a.m., it's completely dark outside, and she is on the side of the freeway by herself, and her car will not start. Now, anybody would be kind of terrified in this situation, but you do have to take into consideration that this was the 1970s, and people were not as afraid to be out late at night by themselves. You know, hitchhiking was a big thing, people trusted strangers, it was just, it was not something that people would be super terrified to be going through. So she decided to use a phone box and ask that a CHP emergency operator or California Highway Patrol contact her parents and let them know that she had run out of gas. They contacted her parents and her sister answers and relays the message to her parents. As soon as her parents found out, they got in their car and went right to the area where Robin's car was. And her car was there, locked, but Robin was nowhere to be found. At first, they figured that she may have left her car and went somewhere else for help. Maybe she tried to walk, but this really didn't make a lot of sense because she knew that somebody was going to be on their way very shortly. And if she left, she would have definitely left some sort of a note or told one of the CHP officers that she was leaving. It just, it wasn't something that she would have done, just leaving her car. So her parents decide that they're going to talk to the CHP officers and see if they know anything. Well, the CHP officers told them that they had talked to Robin a few times and that the last time they talked to her, she said that she had contacted somebody to come help her. So the next time that they drove by and saw her, it was around 2 a.m. And when they saw her at 2 a.m., there was a man with her and they said that they just automatically thought that this man was somebody that she had called for help. So they didn't think anything of it. So they didn't decide to stop and check everything out and make sure everything was okay. This man that she was seen with was described as being Caucasian in his mid twenties with dark hair, about five feet, eight inches tall, wearing bell bottom trousers and a white turtleneck. He was driving a 1958 to 1960 light blue Corvette hardtop that was parked behind her at the time they saw them together. Her family and her friends had absolutely no idea who this man could have been. They knew nobody who owned that type of car. And the only men that Robin would have called when she was in distress would have been either her father or her boyfriend, and it definitely wasn't neither of them. Still to this day, 47 years later, they have no idea who this man was. They never had any leads. They never had any suspects. This man is obviously the person who abducted her, and he most likely waited until the exact second when he knew that he had time to abduct her and the officers were out of view. The officers last saw her around 2 a.m., and her parents got there around 2.30. So within that 30 minute time frame, 
she was abducted. At the time of her disappearance, she was 18 years old, 5 feet 6 inches, 125 pounds. She had long brown hair, brown eyes. She had a birthmark on her lower back, and she was wearing a red shirt, jeans, a dark blue corduroy jacket with gold buttons, and red clog shoes, carrying a brown leather purse. After her disappearance, California Highway Patrol got a lot of backlash for how they handled this situation. I mean, everybody kind of agreed that they could have done something more to help Robin. I mean, this was an 18-year-old girl on the side of the road. Her car was broken down. It was 2 a.m. They should have stayed with her. It's just kind of common sense that they should have stayed with her until something was done and she was safe and her car was either you know, working again or somebody was there to pick her up. The CHP really got a ton of criticism from Los Angeles County Supervisor Kenneth Hahn, so much so that they ended up changing their policy. It now directs any officer to stay with any female motorist who is in distress on the side of the freeway until that female motorist is no longer in distress anymore. A few months later though, a woman came forward claiming that her car stalled out on the side of the freeway in the area late at night also, and a man in a Corvette who fit the description of the man who had abducted Robin offered her help and she kindly said no, and he simply left. This could have possibly been the same man and this could have been something he did on the regular, looking for young women who were stranded on the side of the road. The detectives working on her case theorized that her abduction was related to a few other cases. The first was Rose Tashman who disappeared in 1969 after having a flat tire on the Hollywood freeway not far from where Robin disappeared. Rose's body was later found and she had been brutally stabbed multiple times. The second was Cindy Lee Mellon who disappeared in January of 1970 after having a flat tire in the parking lot of a shopping center in Ventura, California. Her body was never found. Then years later, police thought Robin's disappearance was connected to Mona Jean Galagos' death. She disappeared after her car stalled out on June 19, 1975 on the San Bernardino Freeway at the Santa Anita Avenue off-ramp. Her skeletal remains were found six months later in a Riverside ravine. 17 years after her disappearance, a strange message was ran in the Times' classified section that read, Dearest Robin, you ran out of gas on the Hollywood freeway. A man in a Corvette pulled over to help. You've not been seen of since. It's been 17 years, but it's always just yesterday. Still looking for you. Dot, 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 dot. The Echo Park Ducks. Many thought it was some sort of cryptic message. It caught the attention of everyone, even a KFI disc jockey named Jeff Edwards, who even read it on air and said it sounded very romantic. No one knew what it meant and thought it was possibly a clue to her killing, but there was an explanation. The man who wrote it was a man named Al Madrano, who was a 36-year-old computer operator who still lived in Echo Parks, and he used to be friends with Robin back in the day. He said, well, it occurred to me that November 15th, the day of her disappearance, fell on the same day, Sunday, this year as it did in 1970, and I just wanted to show she wasn't forgotten. She and I were both from Echo Park, and the Echo Park Ducks was a group of our friends back then. I wanted to make it from all of us. So basically it was just a man trying to remind everybody of his good friend. It was done in a little bit of a weird way, kind of mysterious, but it was a sweet sentiment. Still to this day though, there's absolutely no trace of Robin Graham. They've never found her remains or clothes or purse. There have been no sightings of her. There is nothing. Her parents have both since passed away and they never got to find out what happened to their daughter or were able to give her a proper burial. I couldn't really find a whole bunch of information on the type of searching that they did, if it was a huge search, if there was a lot of volunteers, but I'm guessing that they just searched the surrounding area of where she disappeared, but I also couldn't find much on whether they did a really thorough search on the car and who owned a light blue Corvette in the area at the time. Probably a lot of people, but this car could have not even been his. It could have been a relative or friends or even stolen. Unfortunately, there has never been a sketch of this man released to the public because they were not able to make one. The officers that saw him that night did not get a good look at his face. There is a really strange theory about this case though that I have to get into a little bit. There is a large group of people who have researched into this case and think that she may have been a victim of the Zodiac Killer. 
The Zodiac Killer terrorized California around this time and he has seven confirmed victims and there are a lot more speculated victims of his and Robin Graham is one of the lesser talked about ones. This is a tiny theory in this case but it is a theory nonetheless and it's a theory that I have to admit I personally do not believe myself because if you guys know anything about the Zodiac Killer he was a serial killer who definitely was proud of his killings and he wanted everybody to know about them. They have never found Robin's body and as somebody who has researched countless hours into the Zodiac Killer, that's definitely not something that the Zodiac Killer would have done. He definitely wouldn't have killed somebody and then hid their body because that just goes against everything the Zodiac Killer was about. He killed people in gruesome ways and he wanted everybody to know about it and he would send the police letters and it was just highly publicized. I definitely believe that her disappearance was connected to the other women's disappearances and deaths that I mentioned before because you just, you can't deny the similarities in the circumstances. All the women had car issues, they were broken down on the side of the road, something happened and they vanished and either their remains were found or never found. If her disappearance was linked to the other cases, I don't know about you guys, but the way it looks it doesn't look good. It looks like she was most likely murdered not long after being abducted, but her remains were just never found. Whoever abducted her though, most people who research in this case can all agree that it was most likely done by a sociopath. Somebody who was very likable, somebody who was very friendly, and somebody who just faked a good personality to gain people's trust. As for the backlash that California Highway Patrol received after her abduction, I think that, I hate saying this, but I think that it is deserved because if there were policies put in place beforehand, she would have never disappeared. I personally feel like policy or not, it's just kind of common sense. I mean, you are a man, you are an officer, you are supposed to be protecting people and patrolling the area. And this is a woman who is on the side of the road, broken down, she's in distress, she needs help. You should stay with her until she's no longer in need of help. That's basically all that I really have to say about it, but let me know your opinions down in the comments. I love you guys so much. Let me know any other vintage and vanished cases you want me to cover on my channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.